From infidelity to the abuse of power dynamics, to homewrecking, to crossing the picket line, and even writing letters to a judge excusing essay. 2023 has seen more celebrity cancellations than any year I can remember. Mm -hmm. Some people say this is due to the rise of cancel culture or people being too sensitive. But I would like to provide a counter argument. The reason 2023 saw more cancellations than ever is because internet culture has created a greater sense of class consciousness and the spread of information. Our political system is in disarray. Inflation is at an all-time high. The midst of a global pandemic, an ever-growing climate crisis, billion-dollar entertainment conglomerates exploiting the working class. It wasn't a society of hundreds of millions of people that suddenly woke up one day and decided to change their mind. But perhaps... It was the standards, the bar we hold these celebrities to, that experience change. It is made evident when these multi-millionaire famous people don't see the problem with what's going on right now. Because they can't see the problem. They did not experience any of these events mm -hmm. the same way a regular person does. And that caused us to realize that maybe these people aren't as actually good as we think they are. Maybe it's all just a mask. I have a theory that in the next five years, we will see the death of the modern celebrity. From a sociological lens, as well as a marketing perspective, I think we have seen this greater sense of the internet rising up against celebrities doing things that are blatantly unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And celebrities have been doing blatantly unacceptable things for a long time. It's not that the behavior changed. I think our standards have changed for yeah. the better. Well, welcome back to the Share Your Screen podcast. <laughs> My name is Vicky. And I'm Coco Moco. And this is a bit of like a video essay yeah. kind of style. I really have just been thinking about this topic a lot. I just think we as of a society have changed the way we view celebrities and consume celebrity content. Yeah, it's like... There's, you know, a couple things at play, like the SZA situation, for anyone who doesn't know, was the fan, and I'm sure we'll get into it, mm -hmm. being rude for no reason, um, which is like the humanization of celebrities. But then also, I think sometimes celebrities don't humanize the, the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where there's sometimes a disconnect. And, Absolutely. And also, if you guys have any thoughts on this, we have a Discord. We have a Discord. We will link below. So many of you guys have joined, and we really appreciate it. It's so much so fun. Much. We yeah. love talking to you guys and like actually interacting. In a yes. way that's not always a YouTube comment section. It is. It is so much yeah. fun. Yeah, but we join. also we also love the YouTube comment section. <laughs> yeah. So that helps us in the algorithm. So if you guys comment down below, that helps a ton. And then if you guys are listening on podcast, if you leave us a rating wherever you prefer listening, that helps us in so the much. algorithm as well. So thank you guys so much. I had to get that out there. And now let's get into the fun. No, the fun I okay. So my theory, like. In order to understand from like a sociological lens, like what caused this rift between the common people and celebrities? Yeah. Like I really traced this back all the way to like late 2000s, early 2010s okay. and what I like to call the Kardashian effect of the internet. Mm. So towards the end of the 2010s, we saw shows like The Simple Life and Keeping Up with the Kardashians explode. And it kind of created this trend of the glamorization of wealth, where people kind of hate watch it, but aspire to it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the common people got to finally see how these rich people lived. Because yeah. you hate watch it because it's funny to see Kylie Jenner complaining about how something with her private jet is ruining her day. Yeah. Yet you kind of aspire that I wish I lived a life where my biggest problem was something to do with my private jet. You right. know what I mean? You hate watch it, but you don't realize that you're, and we're not psychologists, but we talked about it in previous episodes. You hate watch it, and then you don't realize that you're actually developing the parasocial bond, which is talked about in the book Fangasm, that mm. we bond with the faces that we see most frequently. So you think you're hate watching the Kardashians, and subconsciously, you feel like you're more dependent on liking them and bonding with them than uh -huh. even like your own coworkers or friends in your life because you see their faces more. Totally. That like this frequency builds yeah. connectivity. But I wonder if that's also where all these cancellations are coming from because it's like you also hold the people that you feel closest to on a higher standard. Yeah. Because you think you assume that they have the same values as you. That's so true. Well, I also think around this time was when we saw what I like to call generation one of YouTube. What I call generation one is like 2008 to 2014. 
And this was the antithesis yeah. of this growing like celebrity wealth culture, yeah. right? While we're watching Kim Kardashian and Khloe Kardashian fight in their multi-million dollar house, the people like Jenna Marbles and Liza Koshy or Good Mythical Morning are getting millions of views on mm. YouTube. And I think this opened the door for the inception of the relatable celebrity, yeah. which is somebody that you aspire to or admire the same way you would a famous person. But this time it's actually for who they are and you know about their real life, right? Yeah. And I think this goes to something we talk about all the time of this growing trend of audiences are seeking companionship over entertainment. Yeah. That you can watch an actor in a movie for two hours that you learn about a role they play mm -hmm. or a character or what their character likes. But if you watch one vlog of your favorite YouTuber, you learn what their car looks like, who yeah. their friends are, what coffee they have, what they eat, what they do, where they shop. Like, it's you're learning about who they are as a person. Yeah. And prior to that, we had never really had famous people that were accessible. Accessible. Yeah. yeah. It, if someone was famous, it was for this either wealth or like some sort of craft mm -hmm. that we put them on a pedestal for. So like music, yeah. acting, etc. Again, also the rise of Vine happened mm -hmm. in this era. And I think that that really helped push this relatability factor yeah. forward because while YouTube was a lot of common people, YouTube still had this huge barrier to entry of like, you have to own a camera. Yeah. You have to have the internet speed to be able to upload yeah. to it. You have to know how to edit, blah, blah, blah. But Vine was like literally 14 year olds throwing cheese at the wall and yeah. getting like 15 million views in yeah. the bedroom. And I think that this kind of started to pave the way for um, normal people being idolized mm -hmm. in the same way that prior to this, yeah. only celebrities were idolized. The crazy thing about Generation 1 of YouTube is they were notoriously shunned by Hollywood I was gonna say, and mainstream underpaid. media. Yes. Like, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at every YouTuber from like 2008, 2014, they were talking about how badly I want a TV show. I want to be in a movie, blah, blah, blah. All these people were begging to get on TV. Yeah. And if you look at 2023, all these TV companies are begging, begging. and paying thousands of dollars yeah. to influencers just to talk about a TV yeah. show or something. You know what I mean? Like, I literally think 2008, 2014 will go down as the biggest mistake in the history of the entertainment industry because they could have had what Jenna Marbles is getting 10 million views with a yeah. tiny little camera, a chihuahua in her living room. Yeah. And you're spending millions of millions of dollars on productions, sound, actors. A billboard that no one even looks at. A billboard that no one even looks at for mainstream media yeah. when they could have gotten these people for a fraction of the yeah. price. And I think that this is the beginning of this rift, right? Mm -hmm. We now have, before only celebrities, musicians, actors, now we have celebrities and creators. Yeah. There's now this door has been opened to idolize somebody who isn't uber rich already. Yeah. And something interesting is that the music industry actually was the first to take notice to this mm. because they ended up signing people like Shawn Mendes, Troy Sivan, Conan Gray, all people who were YouTubers or Viners in this time period. For some reason, music kind of was at least the early adapter. I also think it's because existing artists like Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus really popularized the use of YouTube as a promotional yes. method. Like when they were just kids, they were like posting I on remember YouTube for fun. Miley Cyrus had this show on YouTube called The Miley and Mandy Show. Yep. And I made my friend in middle school who had one of those MacBook like computers with the photo booth recreate that YouTube video. They had like, this is a potential thing. <laughs> and I like scene for scene recreated it. And I remember Miley Cyrus even had a video that went super viral on YouTube that was like, I deleted my Twitter. And she's like talking about why she deleted her Twitter. And Miley was really one of the first adopters of YouTube as a celebrity. Yeah, no, she literally and was. And it makes sense that now she has her backyard series that has turned into lucrative. But exactly. Anyway. And I think that is the reason why music got into YouTube early. They yeah. also saw the success of things like Vivo and just like posting music, music videos, videos online and yeah. stuff like that, which is interesting because while the music industry was embracing it and posting their music videos yeah. on YouTube, the entertainment industry was filing lawsuits yeah. <laughs> against people for doing the same thing. I also think it's because uh, the music industry really experienced that downfall in the early internet with Line like Wire. Napster and LimeWire, yeah. 
where they came for those companies for all they were worth yeah. and ended up killing them. But I think that that ended up hurting the music industry or yeah. set it back a few years because they never really, what st music streaming didn't get super popular until yeah. like Spotify came mm -hmm. around and did it a different way. But it's crazy that it took an entire decade yeah. from 2004 to 2015 of like the rise of Spotify to popularize music streaming again in yeah. the way it is now. And that's like the only way we consume music now, essentially. The music industry learned their lesson. The entertainment industry did not. Yeah. Which brings us to like what I like to call Gen 2 internet. So to me, this is 2015 to 2019, 2020. Ooh. This is when we start seeing the rise of the Kardashian effect takes over the internet. Mm. It is the Jake Pauls oh and the Teen Squad. The David Dobricks. The Tana Mojos. Popular content became glamorizing wealth again, yeah. right? This idea of like the everyman, while they still existed, you know, we saw the Emma Chamberlain's yeah. and stuff like this be very successful. Like new creators come up in that traditional way. People like Jenna Marbles still get yeah. millions and millions of views. However, the popular content was like, I'm giving my friend a Tesla. This is my designer bag Name haul. Me. Yeah. Like it was just, I think it's because YouTubers were so shunned by Hollywood. They were overcompensating. They were I've over compensating like, yeah. of like, well, I don't need you. I can show you that I have yeah. money and success without you. I really think yeah. that there was this like growing resentment and that uh, creators felt this need to show off their wealth yes. to be like, I'm successful. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it really felt like they were competing with yes. celebrities almost. Yes. If they couldn't like earn their way in through respect, they were going to buy their way in. Exactly. And I have two quick thoughts on what you're saying. One, I always had an unanswered question whenever people give out like giving my friend a Lamborghini. You know those <laughs> videos that like yeah. very vlog squad-esque yeah. or even these videos that happen on TikTok now where they like surprise like someone working at a coffee shop with like a car because mm -hmm. they told them that they took the bus that day. Amazing. Love that. But my question always is like, does that person now have to pay for the car insurance? That's always what my <laughs> mind taxes, goes to. Property the property taxes. The taxes on the car, like yeah. the car payment. Yeah. Like if you're gifting Joe Schmo a Lamborghini, his yearly expenses on that Lamborghini are now like 3000 a year, if not more because of gas. Totally. So I always wonder when like David Dobrik would gift his friends cars. Is he also like, I'm also going to pay like five years of your car insurance? Some, like, I don't know. I think it probably ends up depending on the creator. I know Mr. Beast has said that he pays for the property taxes of all of it. Like, oh, he's he does. Okay. Because I always wondered that. Yeah. Or he's also said too, um, a lot of people have questions too. Like you say, you're giving someone $500,000, but when you give someone that much money, the it's taxes, taxed. Yeah. And he's like, I actually am giving away like $650,000, then $150,000 oh, okay. is taxed. So the person gets $500,000. Okay, that makes sense. But again, that's one person who is the largest creator and has yeah. enough money to do that. I don't know if. How do we know? And then. John Smith yes. on the YouTube homepage is yeah. like doing that. Like, did they just put their friend in a financial hole? Right. But another thing that I just want to add to, to what you're saying. This is more of an astrological take on okay. the rise of the cancellation of celebrities. And it's not my own original thought. There's tons of videos on the For You page about it if you're woo-woo like me and you believe in it. But there's basically this theory as to why we're seeing more and more A-list celebrities fall right now. Mm. And it's because of right now we are coming to a conclusion of what's called the Pluto was in Capricorn. Okay. And that was the last like 20 years. Capricorn is the sign of wealth, opulence. It's an earth sign. So it's like earthly okay. possessions. Right. And it's why the last 20 years we saw the rise, like the Kardashian effect that yes. happened where people that became famous were the ones that showed off how much money they had, how yeah. they were spending it, why they were so much better than you. Still kind of like private though. Capricorn's still quite private, but people being interested more. And then like just showing off your wealth and also like strong arming. It's a masculine sign. So it's like almost the way that like Joe Jonas is handling, it seems this divorce behind the scenes mm -hmm. is like trying to strong arm it yeah. the way that celebrities were used to with Pluto and Capricorn, yep. which is like, you know, the man behind the scenes, like intimidating everyone into order. Right. That is slipping away. And that's why celebrities, if you believe in this stuff, are so confused as to why their usual tactics in PR and stuff aren't working anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's because in 2024, we are shifting into 
Pluto and Aquarius for the next 20 years. Okay. Aquarius is the sign of community building. Mm. Who has to build communities? Creators. Yep. People who are like not about wealth, not about showing off opulence. They can still be successful, but they don't care about showing that off. And it's not what the masses are going to be interested right. in either. Like Aquarius is not about me, me, me. It's more about like the bigger picture and seeing society as a whole and like contributing to that. Right. And I think that's why we're seeing, again, creators are able to float in a way that it seems like celebrities are not able to keep up with them anymore. Yeah. And it's that shift, I also I think. think it's this like, dilution of power yeah like for every one celebrity there's 500 creators you yeah. know what i mean and there's so many more celebrities to choose from exactly yeah exactly like once upon a time there was you know your handful or whatever and also keep in mind there it, when there's not this spread of information on the internet too yeah. like their pr team can get that out of the news cycle and yeah. whatever they did is gone you know yeah. what i mean but this ability for people to self-publish or people to call people out for anything that they're doing yeah. has made it so this people holding this wealth are yeah. not able to repress all the bad things that yes. they're doing any longer. Two, I think it's like, we also just care less. Yeah. Like I, people don't obsess about the Kardashians. I think the same way they did in 2015 and 2023, yeah. like it's kind of tired. Yeah. It's like, again, it's frustrating for you to complain about your wealth yeah. when all of us are going through stuff. And I think that really shifted at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. This is, again, so now we're going 2020. We see a lot of these Gen 2 internet people, yeah. right? These people who are taking the Kardashian effect to the internet get canceled. Yeah. That's the Jeffree Stars yes. and the Kita Dragons, the Jake Pauls. It's him, like these people who there's a global pandemic going on. Yeah. All of us are locked inside. Yeah. And they're partying. Mm -hmm. You know, it showed that like, oh, these people don't have empathy like yes. the same way we think that they do or at the very least they portray yes. themselves to have like yeah. because in 2018 them a video of them all partying in a mansion would have been fun Made to watch them viral. in 2020 them all partying in a mansion is like what are you doing yeah do you get what mm -hmm. i mean like this a risk. shift yeah it, it's like for the first time we saw on a vis visible scale every normal person around the globe was experiencing a negative world phenomena in unison yeah and there was these uber rich people who were like making themselves immune to it yeah and we really resented that idea yeah. and also i think at this time too it was like we saw just this rift even with celebrities who handled the pandemic well like i, I think it was a video of justin bieber that comes to my mind when he wasn't saying anything wrong and it's a video of him like just saying like hey guys it's, it's really tough time right now like stay safe yeah. stay with your loved ones and he's like in the pool <laughs> at the man at his like mansion getting, like, the in the backyard, like, <laughs> like talking about quarantining. Yeah. And it was just like literally this visual representation of like your quarantine experience is not my quarantine experience. Yes. I and that makes me think of the of I I people always reference it and but I have to hear is that video that went viral in 2020, and I think even like our Heavenly Father Pedro Pascal was in it. But that imagine all the people. And it was like <laughs> these celebrities that sang a compilation of like this John Lennon song because they thought that it would really lift everyone's spirits. But I think what it really demonstrated is that for so long, celebrities, and I mean, we make a living off talking about them. They're yeah. interesting. They're important. But they're not as important as they thought they were. Right. And they thought that this video was going to make everyone be like, oh, was gonna thank God. solve a global yes, pandemic. Like, yeah. Oh my God, I feel so much better now. Like I have three family members in the hospital, but like, oh, I can sleep tonight. Right. But like it, they no longer had that. Like they, I think what made people so frustrated is that celebrities had, what is that? Like delusions of grandiose or whatever. Yeah. Or is. even it's just like this mask started to crack of like self-obsession. Yeah. It's like the fact that you think that there are hundreds of thousands of people dying and you making this video is going to improve that situation. Like the doctors that are literally fighting COVID and the nurses are like, oh, thank God I can like take the day off. Like we have a video of Pedro Pascal singing Imagine floating <laughs> exactly. around the internet. Like we are good. for And they're so covered. excited to go back to the They've ICU tomorrow. To, yes. You know what I mean? Like it's. And I think it demonstrates what's now happening with the Drew Barrymore show, which if she only waited a week, oh, yeah. but it was like, 
her her first initial statement with like why her show is coming back without her writers and crossing the picket line, mm-hmm. she was like, my show brings so much happiness that like we have to do it for the people. Yeah. And everyone's like, you're not We're that. doing fine, babe. <laughs> we are going to do okay. Yeah. Stand with your writers. Like, right. It was just this idea that like her show was like, I, inflation is crazy. I don't know how I'm going to pay rent, but like I can see a 30 second clip of Drew Barrymore like on the floor hugging her makeup artist like, Oh my God, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Let me send that to my landlord and he'll negate and my And it was the literally month. a blatant example of like, I care more about getting more millions of dollars than I care about the people who bring the show to life yeah. that is giving me that income. The thousands of people Especially that are like- Especially when it's someone like Drew Barrymore yeah. who builds her entire brand on like- being an empath. Yes. And I think there is no bigger red flag on the internet than someone who talks about how big of an empath they are. Yeah. The second somebody is screaming, I'm a great person, it should be the biggest red flag. Yeah. Run away. Like somebody, I want you to close your eyes and think of the kindest, most genuine person who is there for you when you need them the most. How often is that person going up to you and being like, well, I'm only doing this because I'm an empath. Or yeah, like, no, they're too I'm, busy putting out other people's fires and like, right? like calling their friends. Or it, that are to mean. them, it's like genuine kindness comes yeah. from the nature that you don't even think of it as kindness. You just see it as the right thing to do, yeah. so you do it. Yeah. And you don't need to wait until a camera is turned on. Yeah. There's a live studio audience. Yeah. You're making sure you're on payroll. Yeah. And there's a few ad breaks running yeah. before you're willing to do a kind act yeah. for somebody. You know what I mean? And that's what I think happened to Drew Barrymore. And I think, honestly, even that's why people were, like, more shocked about Drew Barrymore than a lot of, like, the some other, like, talk show hosts that were going through stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's because she built her entire identity on being a really good person who gets it. She's, like, sitting on the couch next to her desk. There's nothing worse than... There's such a PR ticking time bomb when someone's, like, a good person. Oh, yeah. You know? Exactly. And I want to add that um, one person, Conan O'Brien, I believe it was, who, just to contrast what happened with Drew Barrymore, um, when the strike happened in, like, 2007, 2008, people Uh were like, well, Conan O'Brien went on with his show. But specifically what Conan O'Brien did is he continued with a few episodes of his show to demonstrate how important his writers were. So there was segments where he was like, okay, I'm just going to like spin this penny on my desk until it falls down. And he'd like count. And then, but like he purposely made his show so boring. Oh, I didn't even know that happened. As a way to like, as a way to like be in solidarity with the writers. Yeah. Where he literally pawned his show and would just sit there and like count to 10. Literally. Or just like was like, what do you guys want me to do And it's like, if you genuinely thought your willingness to bring joy to people was so important, what you could have done is reached out to your writers, said, hey, yeah. I would love to pay you all yeah. to write a YouTube video for me. Yes. And yeah. like, there you go. Your audience yeah. could have found it. It would have been joy. It would have been something not yeah. on mainstream media, not on TV, not something that a multi-billion dollar conglomerate that was, you know, negotiating yeah. with the WGA was experiencing. Yeah. Like, you could have been like, hey, I will financially support you. I will pay your rent for you. I believe in you striking against this thing. Yeah. Let's take this content and put it elsewhere. Yeah. No, why didn't you do that? Because you wouldn't have gotten paid for it. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. So like that, again, to me, it's like these moments start to come out in a multitude of ways. Yes. Like it's not even... Compounded. It's yeah. literally the tipping point. It's like there's cracks and then for some reason one day it just... Yeah, it's like the more terrible things happened on a global scale, this political instability, yeah. this pandemic, this rising inflation like we this gap became more visual yeah do you get what i mean Mm -hmm. like this gap became like it's not cute to see you even just like doing an apology video in your multi-million dollar mansion you know what i mean like and you're like i support the writers blah 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 you know it's been really hard for us all you're in a multi-million dollar mansion jane smith is in a picket line yes and And not able to pay her rent and not able to pay her rent like you're not the same it reminded me, there was a few TikTokers that made videos on this, and I really, really, like, wish I knew the exact usernames, but there was such a fascinating discord about celebrity apologies versus creator apologies, and essentially that, like, creators, if you look at them almost as, like, living beings, mm-hmm. creators have been able to evolve quicker than celebrities, and so creators all had their messy 
badly received apology videos like five, three years ago, like yeah. the Laura Lee crying on her bedroom <laughs> yeah. floor. And then it's like, but now celebrities are making the same mistakes years later, like the Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher. And yeah. also the celebrities are apologizing for things way worse. I don't think Laura Lee ever did like deserved the crazy that happened. That's a story for another day. Right. But it's almost like creators went through this backlash and have almost evolved the way that they do apologies and celebrities haven't caught up to that. And I think part of it is that creators for better, or for worse, have a obsessive like feedback loop with their audience. So yeah. they're able to course correct quicker and evolve. Literally, if it's like an insect, it's evolving with what's happening. It's an environment and it's going to survive yeah. where celebrities have this like hard shell around them. And they're not able to evolve the way that creators can because they don't have the same Totally. Feedback. And creators, again, build community around yeah. who they are. Like there yeah. is at least even when people experience cancellations, it, for because I don't want it, my goal yeah. of this video is not to say cancel culture doesn't exist. Yeah. There is so many times it can be extremely toxic. And we'll get to that later on. But there are it, that doesn't mean that these people aren't doing something wrong yes. and should be held accountable. You know what I mean? That's what I think. Like now the narrative online and stuff is like, well, this is just, I'm just being canceled because of cancel culture, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I think you um, asked one of your, told your, one of your dancers to eat a banana out of somebody else's yes. like <laughs> private parts. Yes. Like let's maybe address the fact that that's unacceptable regardless yeah. of if you're famous or not regardless of if there's a platform or not. Yeah. Like that is just a wrong thing to ask somebody to do, right? If yeah. you asked me to do that, I would be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Like it does not matter who you are. And like that is like what I really want the yeah. thesis of this video yeah. to be about. Also that like people should be allowed to make mistakes and like also be able to have that flexibility to grow from it. And totally. I think that people just want that acknowledgement. Totally. But like if you never, it's like if you're a kid and you get in trouble because you like, you cussed at the teacher and then you go into the office and they're like, hey, we just want you to write an apology letter to the teacher. And you're like, fine, I'm just expelled. I guess I'm expelled now. Yeah. It's like, no, That's no, no, such no. a great analogy. Like, let's just apologize. Like, yeah. let's, just, like, let's just acknowledge Right, and, and you don't okay. need to like antagonize the group yeah. of people who said like, hey, this made us upset. Yeah. Like the answer is to learn from it yeah. and to grow from yeah. it. And I also think too, like you can really tell when people have that mentality. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, or when they don't and when mm -hmm. they're placating or when they're like, there's things I want to say, but I can't say them right now. Yeah. There's nothing that annoys me more in an influencer or celebrity apology than like, you wish you could know the tea, but you don't. You know don't. what's the best line? My team said <laughs> I couldn't say anything. Yes. But they didn't say I couldn't sing it. That's so true. Uh, <laughs> that's so true. That was like so off of a creative. I mean, that it was video like a needs moment. to be studied. It, if we have a pop culture museum, there's going to be like a dark room that you have to like sign away before oh, you go in. And it's like That ukulele needs to it's be behind plain. bulletproof glass. Yes. It is an artifact of the internet in my mind. It kind of reminds me, the Miranda Sings like ukulele apology video reminds me of that one song that was in, I think, The Conjuring that was like, tiptoe window. <laughs> and it has like that same creepy vibe. Yeah. It's just like. Yeah. But anyway, Gross. I just had to say, yeah. No, that was a good, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and then this brings us to like out of the pandemic, you know? Okay. And I also think go. too that like celebrities were like, great, we're going to go back to 2019. Yes. That is not what happened. No. That is not what happened. Like people lost their jobs. Yeah. People uh, were defaulting on loans. Yeah. People had to move. People were trapped inside. There was this all time high of things like, domestic violence yeah. and essay because people were mm -hmm. locked in with these people yeah. and, and couldn't escape them. And I think this brings us to gen three of the internet, which is the rise of TikTok, but really what I like to call this underdog effect. Oh. And I think one of the interesting things about creators versus celebrities is at least when a creator gets famous, even if it's to mainstream media fame, it's because a group of people chose them. Yeah. We, a group of people rallied around this person and said, we like what this person is doing mm -hmm. and we want them to achieve higher success. Whereas with actors who got famous, it's Jeanette from yeah. casting <laughs> yeah. who casted them in the movie in Burbank, that yeah. then had a $100 million marketing budget yeah. and was a really popular movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there was this first time that it's like, the internet is now this democratization of opinion. Mm -hmm. 
if something is going viral at, for the bare minimum, for better or for worse, it is because there was a group of people who decided we like this. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And there was no larger visual representation of that to me until literally this past month, which is the <gasps> entire event that inspired this video, was I saw more people talking about Tube Girl at Paris Fashion <gasps> Week than I saw Wait. people talking about Kendall Jenner. And that to me was like, You're so right. people are more interested in seeing this common person like a normal yes. girl that we have all rallied around because we really believe in it and we think it's cool and it's great to see wow. be put on this stage then we care about the millionaire yeah. who has been on the stage for forever you know what i mean like it's like if you ever liked one of sabrina bassoon two girls videos you were one of those votes that got her on that stage exactly wow. it felt like this it's like wow because we all rallied around mm -hmm. this thing like we're seeing this person have this massive success You're and so right. that is what brings me to where I think there was a marketing perspective behind okay. this that people aren't thinking about is the more tube girls we have which again there's the Vita Caris there yes. was last year it was okay. like an Axel Weber blah, blah blah it seems like every year we have a new yeah. like you know this underdog that yeah. people are really rooting around is there is a diminishing return on investment for working with celebrities yeah. and a growing return on investment for working with creators how much do you think it costs to get Tube Girl to walk Paris Fashion Week? I wouldn't surprise me if she did it for free, right? Because yeah. it's like such a cool moment. And she, and she got wants so much from get... it that it's yes. like, yeah. How much do you think it costs to pay Kendall Jenner? I feel like she's probably like a 10 million. <laughs> like yeah. so much, more yeah. than we can fathom. Yeah, you know? I say that like I have any idea, but yeah. Like to me, I'm like, okay, so if Tube Girl is getting more success for zero and Kendall Jenner is getting less for millions, these gonna shift. budgets and, and, you know, big corporations move slow. But if there's one thing that will always incentivize a corporation to move, it's money. Yes. Thank, like, thanks capitalism. But that's how these things work. And the more two girls there are, they're going to be like, why are we Why are we paying Kendall Jenner this much money again? Yeah. Like, do we, do we really need to be doing this? And I think we're going to see, too. Also, too, like, even let's view, like, a, a commercial. Yeah. You can pay one celebrity, I don't know, six figures for a commercial. Or you can get 20 creators, have 20 times the amount of assets, yeah. have 20 times, literally the, if the For You page is a lottery, 20 times the amount of lottery tickets for one of them to go viral, right? And a t 20 times the diversity of backgrounds, yeah. of sexual representations, of, of gender representations, of racial representation. Like, it is so not logical from a money spent to money received perspective mm -hmm. for these brands to keep pulling mil pouring millions of dollars into like Kendall Jenner holding a Pepsi. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and also I think too, a big reason these brands used to not want to work with influencers way back in the day was this idea that influencers would get canceled, right? Yeah. Like you could work with an influencer and they could do something terrible, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's why people were like, well, celebrities are safe. Yeah. And I think we're starting to realize, like, no, celebrities aren't safe. In fact, a lot of the times what celebrities are doing are worse because it's on a larger scale. Yeah. And I think that that shift, again, in the next five years, we're going to see these brands are like, wait a minute. Like, why are we paying millions of dollars to these people when we could be paying less for more? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I also like what you say, too. I think that where there's a problem with celebrity sometimes partly why they were protected for so long is there's less information that comes out about them and mm -hmm. there's this strategy in PR and marketing that um is sometimes weaponized I think we saw it with the Trump administration which is it's the technical term is information overload yep and it's essentially where if you make a mistake what happens is you'll try and do a bunch of other things so then when people google your name the feed the SEO is flooded with like, right. you know, Trump dropped toothbrush on sidewalk and picked it up versus like Trump said something awful about, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, an entire race of people. Exactly. Yeah. And I think we would see that where Trump would do something where like maybe, I, I mean, this is getting political, but like he probably realized was, or the people around him were like, shit, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And he would just put out a bunch of other incoherent tweets that day mm -hmm. because then by the time the 5 p.m. news cycle came on, there were other things they were talking about. Yep. So I think that what happens though, and what I mean by this is I don't think influencers even do it intentionally, but there's this idea of like information overload. So 
when a celebrity makes a mistake like Mila Kuna, Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, their next news cycle isn't until one of them appears in a movie or a show. And that yeah. could be years. So people are going to ruminate on that. Yep. But with influencers, like what's happening right now with the London and Olivia girl where um, racist tweets came out around their wedding time, but it was from like 10 years ago. Anyways, they did an apology story. And then by the time the news cycle is diving into the story, they're influencers. They've probably posted 10 other videos by the time. Yeah. Someone, you know, so it's like with with influencers, they're also a little bit more elastic to these cancellations because there's so many more things happening at a given time because of the nature of their work versus a yeah. celebrity has to wait years or months until their next project That's comes such out a good point. to push a story like, out. No matter how many years from now it is, it will be the first movie Ashton Kutcher has done since he, exactly. you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like he's like an influencer who's going to post a vlog in right. two days like, and then it'll it pushes it It'll be a headline no matter what. Yeah. So That's I think a really it, good point. It sometimes is a way that I think influencers are insulated from like they get canceled, but then they have five other videos the next month. That, and I think like, for example, the Miranda Sings thing, Colleen Ballinger, her biggest mistake is like, she just went quiet. Like, I just think like sometimes you just have to like, yeah. just keep showing up until people forget. Yeah. I, I mean, that's if I'm saying devil shoulder. Right. But it's just, I think, an interesting take where actors don't have the same information overload that like creators do. No, I think that's a, a great point. Yeah. And this pedestal we used to put, celebrities on is now there's like a hundred pedestals yeah for a hundred different things you yeah. know like we just don't need to anchor on to these three musicians they used to absolutely love when there's new music trending yes every week you know what i mean like you yeah. now have this like a way to fill this gap when somebody does something wrong that maybe wasn't there 10 years ago. Totally. There's like other people that can placate the audience. Exactly. Whereas they're not like desperate. Like I think with, I think of like Charlie Sheen and I remember when he kind of had this very public meltdown about like Tiger Blood, but he was really one of the only actors in one of the biggest sitcoms at the time. And that was like near the end of the golden era of sitcoms, but people kind of had to like still see him because yeah. he was on CBS from... 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. every night. Exactly. They couldn't just go to a different creator's page. Yeah. I just think that we're going to see in the next five years, like I think it, this is only going to increase or at the very least stay, like this accountability level will stay for the better. Yeah. And we'll see too that as like these bigger names fall, that hopefully I think that makes more space for you know, like I, like the ice spices of yeah. the world, like these people who just self publish on on the internet one day, and and we kind of rally around them because we like what they're doing, and and it's not any deeper than that. Like I like yeah. this song, I, she put out another song. I like this song too. Let's see this girl put out an album. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I really think that that's where this internet is go is going, like the direction mm -hmm. it's headed in, and I think hopefully that ends for the better. Yeah, and I also think like allowing people to have elasticity and like making mistakes. But part of that is they also have to like acknowledge where they went wrong and not just be like, okay, well fine. Yeah. Fine. You're not going to get anything from me. And people are like, okay. <laughs> exactly. Like, but you know, so. Exactly. That was great. Well, like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. Please rate us on Spotify. Please Google, subscribe if, if you're, this is your first time seeing us. We'd love yes. to have you. Um, Thank you guys. And yeah, we'll see you next week. And